Thomas and the Virginia Tech Hokies, the only thing standing in the way of the Clemson Tigers in their third straight win over a top 25 team. Should the Tigers pull that off, it would be the first time in school history. Robert, a Clemson quarterback, Taj Boyd, has turned a lot of heads this season. 23 of 37, 330, 44 yards last week against Florida State. The Tigers beat the Seminoles the week prior to that. They knocked off Auburn. Is this Clemson team for real? I think it is, and I've not been a believer, but I went back and studied the tape this week. The thing that jumps out to me is Taj Boyd at quarterback in a system he's not used to be being in under Chad Morris less than 11 months. He's operating it at a level that you would think he's a fifth-year senior and had great experience. I think that they get the win in Blacksburg. Huge offensive performance from Boyd. Yeah, and I think Sammy Watkins, the true freshman receiver, 296 receiving yards last two weeks, 242 after the catch. And if they win, we get to watch Dabo Sweeney. And there's just <laughs> no telling what he might do on the road. It's Clemson and Virginia Tech. We'll be back with you at the half. Enjoy the game, everybody. This is Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Virginia is for the lovers, nurtured by time-honored traditions, a clash beloved since the turn of the century. But technically speaking, Virginia is for lovers of hokey pride. No, we may not be what we were, but at 4-0, we still rise, and you love us nonetheless. Tonight, Virginia is also for lovers of the Clemson Nation, the love effusive, showering down from the helm with the faithful experiencing winning like a contagion. Tigers and Hokies loving every minute of it. Next. Welcome everyone to the ACC on ESPN. The ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Miller Lite. As part of tailgate week fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. A raucous and frenzied frenetic Lane Stadium here in Blacksburg Virginia for the 31st meeting all time between Clemson and Virginia Tech. Hello everybody I'm Mark Jones along with Ed Cunningham Quint Kessenick down on the field joins us in just a few moments Ed, both these teams come into the game 4 and 0 undefeated with championship aspirations but tonight they get a chance to really find out what they're working with and for Virginia Tech kind of a soft schedule to start but they're 4 and 0 never gave up more than 13 points in the first four, four ball games but I think a lot of people look at Clemson they beat the defending national champion Auburn they beat Florida State but let's not forget they struggled against Wofford they had to fight to beat Troy Auburn's not as good as a lot of people think they are and Florida State was without two of their best players including their quarterback I'm not saying that they don't deserve their ranking but I think both teams have a lot of questions to answer this evening at Virginia Tech has won the last five meetings in a row against the Tigers and Quinn Kessenick man communication is going to be key tonight won't it yeah a lot of noise expected Clemson will have to utilize a silent snap count here's how it'll work quarterback Taj Boyd will give the center a visual indicator whether it's lifting his leg or clapping that will commence the play now that indicator is also a point where Virginia Tech defensive coordinator Bud Foster told us that he can come out of his disguise so when you see Boyd lift a leg or clap that's when Virginia Tech will show their hand and, and get actually into their actual coverage and not their disguise coverage. A great matchup between a couple of coaches, one extremely experienced, 25 years on the JOB, and Dabo Sweeney in his third season on the sidelines at Clemson, a former player at the University of Alabama. As his team sitting in a very good spot right now, he says that he has the players to make Clemson very relevant once again. And meanwhile, Frank Beamer continues to roll right along. 25 years on the sideline at Virginia Tech. Since 1993, they've been to a bowl game every single year. They're the defending ACC conference champs. Virginia Tech winning the toss, deferring to the second half. So Clemson will receive the opening kickoff. And the temperatures here on the first Saturday of October 
At Cunningham, I'm going to say this is unusually chilly, okay? 43 degrees, a little bit of drizzle starting up just a few moments ago. And extremely windy, too. Does, does the wind affect any one team more than the other? Shouldn't be too bad. Both of these teams are uh, used to playing in some wind in the areas that they are. But I would think the cold for guys who handle the ball, we've been coming out of summer. It's not been this cold in this part of the country and down in South Carolina, obviously. But I think hands being cold, getting over the sidelines, if your offense is on the sideline for a while, I don't think players this early in the year are going to be used to that. So watch for some drop balls mm. or maybe some mishandled snap things of that nature. Wind coming out of the northwest, left to right on your screen. And this is the first real big road test for Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers. Justin Meyer to kick off for the Hokies. Deron Brown and the combustible, explosive freshman Sammy Watkins staying on the five-yard line for the Tigers. We are underway. And Meyer kicks it in the end zone. It'll come out to the 20-yard line, which is where Clemson's quarterback, Taj Boyd, will take the opening snap of the ball game. He's completing 66% of his passes on the season. 13 touchdown passes versus just one interception. But keep in mind, this is his first big road test, making just his fifth career start. And a young man from the state of Virginia, they talked to him all week, just stick with your footwork. You only saw, you saw the one interception. Let's focus on what got us here, not the fact that you're coming home to play your first big ball game. Andre Ellington in the backfield behind Boyd. There's that little bubble screen they like to run to Watkins. And Watkins knocked out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. Let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Dwayne Allen, an NFL tight end, had a huge game last week against Auburn with seven catches. Of course, Sammy Watkins burst onto the scene against Auburn and Florida State. The country knows about him. But J. Ron Hosley, an All-American corner, nine interceptions last year, two already on the season. He had three last year against NC State. Watkins in motion. Boyd keeps it. Toss to Watkins, who's chopped down in the backfield. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but a great open field stop by Kyle Fuller coming up from his cornerback spot. Chad Morris, of course, runs the spread offense. Don't see much option. Excellent force by the corner. Comes up and a nice open field tackle to force a third and medium. Boyd incomplete should have been caught by Ellington and on their first series of the ball game Clemson goes three and out and remember Clemson's punter Dawson Zimmerman suffered a bruised patella on his kicking leg when he got basically cut in half last week against Florida State would not be surprised to see Virginia Tech come after this punt to see if Zimmerman is in fact 100 percent keep in mind the Hokies have one of the top special teams units in the country during Frank Beamer's reign. Zimmerman punting, standing at his own 10. A line drive that bounces at the 45. There's a flag down back at the 13-yard line, and they might have clipped Zimmerman a little bit. Kyle Fuller was there trying to get to it. It's a 41-yard punt, but let's see what this flag is about. Yeah, I think it's... Bruce Taylor, number 51, and Kyle Fuller were back there. And it's just a five-yard penalty. Torsen the foul. Well from the kicker. 51. Defense. And it looks like Clemson has their offense coming back onto the field now. Of course, the penalty, pardon me, I thought it was not going to pick up the first down, but it does pick up with the 15-yard. 
uh, uh, penalty. It appeared as if Dawson Duff, yeah, was on his I, way down before yeah, he got hit. That, that's not a 15-yard penalty. That, that's that's not a good call. First and ten from the 39. Watkins in motion. They hand it off to Ellington. And Ellington out to the 41-yard line. Whitley and Hosley making the stop. A gain of three. One more look. Well, they, they ran into him, but to me, that's a five-yard running into, not a 15-yard first down. Second and seven. Boyd to pass and under heat. A little bit high intended for Bryant. It'll be third and long coming up for the Tigers. Antoine Hopkins, one half of the Hopkins brothers up front, providing the pressure. And Hopkins got through because of a blown assignment up front by the offensive line for Clemson. And, and Davo Sweeney was very clear and very pointed about his offensive line. They have not been happy with how this group has played, a group that they expected with a lot of veterans coming back, they would play better, and they have not. You see their efficiency, though, on third down this year, second in the conference. Boyd given time, incomplete, intended for Allen, his stud tight end, who can't squeeze it. And once again, it's three and out. Well, Eddie Whitley on the coverage. And you see how much they respect Allen. That's Hosley, an All-American cornerback there, obviously playing zone coverage. But he breaks out on the ball, and Allen is just he's such a big, smooth athlete. Ball not perfectly thrown, but Hosley right on the spot. Zimmerman back into punt. Osley standing back at his own 18. Remember last time, a moment ago, they roughed up the punter, Zimmerman, and got a first down out of it. This time they don't come after him quite as much. Another line drive fumbled. The ball is loose. And the Hokies recover it. Just a 28-yard punt. Talked about the windy conditions down on the field today. Tyshawn Jarrett, a cornerback, was indecisive on that short punt. Came up and didn't know if he wanted to catch it or not. Well, Logan Thomas taking the reins of the Virginia Tech offense from his own 33-yard line. Has four touchdown passes on the season versus four interceptions. Native of Virginia, out of Lynchburg, making his fifth career start. Single back set. Wilson takes the handoff. Moves the pile all the way down to the 38-yard line where Brandon Thompson makes the stop. Let's take a look at our impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Well, for Virginia Tech offensively, Jared Boykin, who's been battling a hamstring. He's Virginia Tech's all-time leading receiver. They expect him to get some run tonight. David Wilson, you've already seen, looks small, plays much bigger than he is at 205 pounds. And Andre Branch from Richmond, Virginia, right up the road. He's been having a nice season. Wilson gets the handoff again, gets the first down and then some. Wilson into Clemson territory at the 47-yard line. Got a great block up front to pick up 14 yards, and he shows you why he's the team's leading rusher. The first thing you notice when you meet David Wilson is he's so much thicker in person than he looks on the field. For some reason, he looks like he's a slight guy, but yesterday when he walked into our meeting, he's very well put together, obviously a very explosive athlete, but... He runs between the tackles better than I think he's given credit for. A real bright personality, too. First down and 10. Wilson around the right side. Another good gain of about five on the play. It was Wilson that said to us in our meetings when he asked him about what goals they had set for this game and beyond. He said, you know what, Mark? We don't plan on losing any time this year. He's very confident in himself and his teammates. And they were talking about how they wanted to reassert their ACC dominance. They felt like the conversation all week around the national media was about Clemson. Well, of course, they just beat Florida State and Auburn back to back. But I think this team used that as motivation. Wilson now lining up behind the quarterback, Logan Thomas. Phillips in motion. Flag down of the play, and Wilson is brought down after a gain of about one.
Critical formation. Got more than four men in the backfield on the offense. Well, those pre-snap penalties. When you've got some momentum, you're on the plus side of the field. Now you go from a really nice down. Kind of middle, or third four in there where you've got some command of what you can call now the second and long. Wouldn't be surprised for a draw here. Thomas hasn't thrown it yet. Has it right here. Wilson out of the backfield complete. Had a couple of blockers out front and makes it down to the 41 yard line where Sensabon makes the stop on a gain of six. So you're third and about four to go. What do you like? Well, it seems to be the uh, Wilson show. Why not just <laughs> stick with him? Third and four is one of those down distance where defensively, I think you can think about if you're Kevin Steele, the defense coordinator for Clemson, bringing pressure. And that was a nice flip pass over there to Wilson. Maybe some type of delay or wide receiver screen to the other side. Logan Thomas redshirted as a freshman, backed up Tyrod Taylor a season ago. Look at it, third and four here. Gets rid of it quickly, incomplete, and intercepted at the 30-yard line. Great catch by Xavier Brewer. It was off the hands of Jared Boykin and into the arms of Brewer. And with that, the game's first turnover. And this was a timing issue between Boykin and the quarterback. Boykin had not practiced for a while. That ball got there too soon. He gets a hand, tips it right to the Clemson defender. The fifth pick of the season for the Tigers. They'll take over on first and ten when we return. of impressive wins by the Tigers coming into this game. Dabo Sweeney called his schedule a schedule of champions. And wide open, Allen this time squeezes it. And close to the first down, out by the 42-yard line. What makes him special as a player, Ed? Well, they one of the, I mean, he's a big guy who can run and can catch. And I think that Chad Morris in his first year realized we've got a special player. Let's use him in different ways. And this, just such a tough misdirection, really hard on the defense. Ellington going the other way on a handoff, brought down behind the line of scrimmage. At the 38-yard line, Bruce Taylor there to make the stop. An all-ACC selection a season ago. Bruce Taylor, one of those guys who got a chance because of an injury. Last year, Barkwell Rivers was out with a torn quadricep. Bruce Taylor, they didn't know what to expect. He came in, and all of a sudden, Bud Foster said, wow, we didn't know this guy could play like this. He's starting to become a stalwart for the Hokies at that middle linebacker spot. Second and 14. Boyd under heat. Boyd getting it done with his legs out to the 44-yard line. Dragged down by Taylor once again. Picked up six on the play. They'll be third down and about seven or eight to go. They're not booing. They're saying Bruce. They've had some good Bruce's here on defense at Virginia Tech. I heard Bruce Smith, Smith was yeah. actually in town for this ball game. Third and eight. This defense number two in the country against the run. Good against the pass as well. They get to Boyd. It's Derek Hopkins on the sack. Well, this offensive line is confused right now. Bud Foster dialing up a bunch of different looks. Watch the slide protection here and here. And the two players are completely cut loose. That's Tariq, loose. That's Tariq Edwards and also Derek Hopkins. Going back to what we talked about with the coach from Clemson, they are not happy with the way this run is playing, and they're not starting out so hot to this afternoon. Osley back deep. Zimmerman with his third punt of the night. This one a little bit better, a high spiral. 
Mosley makes the catch at the 27. Reversing his field, but nowhere to go is going to be down at about the 20 yard line. It'll be first down and 10, a 38 yard punt. Mosley losing seven on the return. Folks, hey, there are two great college football games tonight on ESPN and ABC. First on ESPN at 8. Chip Kelly's Fighting Irish look to win their third straight as they take on the Boilermakers. Then on ABC Saturday Night Football, Taylor Martinez and the eighth-ranked Cornhuskers look to stamp themselves as a Big Ten threat in their first season in the conference when they face Russell Wilson at number seven, the Badgers. Both games part of tailgate week fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Thomas almost intercepted at the 37-yard line. Sensaba almost had Clemson's second pick of the game. Late throw by Logan Thomas. This is one thing that Mike O'Kane, the quarterback's coach, actually a graduate of Clemson, and coach at Clemson, but now here at Virginia Tech, is, has to work on a young quarterback. They go through their progressions. That was a late throw. Sensaba, one of the fastest guys on the team, was able to get a jump on it because Thomas got the ball out late. Second and ten. Wilson with the handoff has a blocker out in front. Still on his feet. Great effort by Wilson. Brought down by Branch and he picked up nine. Giving them a pretty good situation here. Third and short. So impressed with this young man. Incredible speed. He was an All-American in track. Over 51 feet in the triple jump. So you know he's an explosive athlete. But he just does not go down easily. And I think defenses sometimes when you watch film, you don't realize, kind of like Emmett Smith. Remember, Emmett Smith didn't look that big, but he was just so powerful. And Thomas keeps himself on third and short to get the first down. Picks up three on the play, and uh, Logan Thomas, an interesting story, came to Virginia Tech as what he thought a tight end, H-back type. And then into his freshman year, got the call into his office from offensive coordinator Brian Steinspring and head coach Frank Beamer said, son, we think that you got a great future at quarterback. And he'd spent the entire summer training to be a tight end. So he said it was a little bit of a change. A counter move here. Wilson with a nice seam. A first down and then some. Picks up about 13 on the play. Willard making a stop. One of the things uh, while we were talking to Dabo Sweeney this week about his team, he was a little concerned about how physical Virginia Tech can be. Florida State did not run the ball very much or very well last week. Auburn, of course, a spread team. But he said, we are beat up. We played two quality opponents like that. And I'm a little concerned about our defensive front and how beat down they might be. And this defense, 90th in the country, giving up 405 yards and right now getting pushed around a little bit. First and 10. Boykin in motion to the top of your screen. Just hands it off to Wilson. Hurdles a tackle, put it on the low. He lost it. It's loose, and Clemson recovers. The play's live. Meeks. Going for the pylon and marked out of bounds at the two. But there's a flag down all the way back at midfield at the 49. So let's hold on and wait and see if this stands. Holding number 40 on the return team. It's a 10 yard penalty. First down. That is a huge, huge penalty against Clemson. Instead of first and goal inside the five, they're going to have first and 10 on about the minus their own 41. Second turnover of the game by the Hokies here. Nice job by 32 Carlton Lewis, the safety. Coming up and got his shoulder right on the ball. That thing popped up into the air. And Meeks came back quickly the other way, alertly corralling the loose ball. Boykins with a sore hamstring. Nice job saving the touchdown, even though it would have come back. Back with more right after this. Smoothest riding off-road vehicle now at your local dealer. 
Well, in television land, we have the luxury of speeding up time with time lapse photography, but it really underscores the point that things have changed around here, no longer in short sleeves. This is almost, well, football weather, per se, real football weather. Temperatures in the 40s, and Clemson starting to heat up a little bit. Ellington, after the turnover moments ago, here it was. Watch this hit by Carlton Lewis. You hear about the put put the helmet on the ball. What I love about this, the ball gets a little loose on Wilson. See how his head is up? The, the helmet does hit the ball and knock it loose, but he sees what he hits. You hear that all the time. See what you hit. That's a great tackle, good technique, but here's the biggest thing. So much safer for a player to come up with his head up than his head down. Boyd, incomplete, dropped by Ellington on a catchable pass. A flag back at the 33-yard line. It's going to go against the Tigers. Clemson, the recipients of a second turnover. Holding 79, offense. It's a 10-yard penalty. Five ten to go so far in a scoreless first quarter. We were talking with running back David Wilson during our meetings yesterday, and he told us of his litany of goals that he set for himself for the year. Amongst them, Ed, he said zero fumbles. He, that was his third of the season. Is it realistic to have zero fumbles for a running back that carries it that much? No, but you wouldn't want him setting a goal of six or seven okay. fumbles during the year. So. <laughs> I don't blame him for having zero, but a good hit by Lewis. A really nice form tackle right on the ball. Quarterback drawn second and long. Great run by Boyd. Gained about 14. It'll be third and about four to go. Gives them the option of doing a couple of things. That is a huge gain by Boyd and a nice call by Chad Morris. He, Virginia Tech very aggressive right now, so got him up the field and ran by them. Now, I think a misdirection type of play is on tap here. Little fake, and he threads it in there between two defenders to Jerron Brown for the first down. He was working against Chris Hill on the play to pick up 16. Boy, what an accurate throw by Taj Boyd. And watch the blocker come, and then he's the guy that looks like they're going to set up the screen, but they don't. They actually throw the slant. Pretty good coverage, but because the defenders were late getting there, they couldn't make a play on the ball. First and ten. Boyd. Boy, what a great catch by the freshman Sammy Watkins. Shows you why he leads the nation in touchdown catches. And you're the top in almost every other receiving category, picking up 12. How do you defend that? It looks like it's going to be a run to the right with the quarterback. He pulls up. He throws one down the field that you have perfectly covered. And Watkins goes up and makes a nice catch. I, you just can't. How do you defend it? Ellington. Another nice gain of about seven. Taylor making the stop. And here's what's happening now in Blacksburg, Virginia. Clemson looking for its third consecutive win against a ranked opponent. It would be the first time they've done that in school history. Coming up ahead, Virginia Tech looking for its eighth straight ACC season opening win. They've won the title four of the last seven years. Ellington straight ahead between the tackles. Going to be stopped up about two yards short of the first down. Ed, this is a versatile Clemson offense, though. So many different things. A little unconventional. You know, what's interesting is there is a lot of spice on the outside with the motions, but when you break them down on film, their run game, it's a power run game, it's a zone run game. It, it's complexly simple. Mm. It looks like it's crazy and a bunch of things going on, but it's really very kind of standard football when you're running it, especially. Third and two. Ellington picks up the first down at the 14-yard line, picks up two. Eddie Whitley makes the stop from his strong safety spot, and there's a look at the defensive coordinator, longtime defensive coordinator, Bud Foster for Virginia Tech. He said that this Clemson team reminds him of those old Miami teams back in the day when they had all those great skill players. Well, the recruiting class that they brought in here at Clemson, one problem last year, they lost some speed. 
to some injury they, they've got an abundance of speed especially in the two freshman class. And a jailbreak screen incomplete intended for Watkins. Hosley was defending on the play and boy it's something has to give here when you stack the numbers up against each other. And Clemson of course last week Florida State also a top five defense so they put 35 on them. I'm not sure they're going to be able to put 35 on Virginia <laughs> Tech but a nice drive here at the end of the first quarter. Second and ten Bellamy in the backfield. Boy, plenty of time. Hosley defending on the play. Receiver went down. It was Allen. And no flag as Allen pleadingly looks at the official on the play. Feet get tangled. This is a good no call. Hosley's just trying to run through the ball. Even though his hand was on, he wasn't changing his directions with his hands. That's a really nice no call. Third and ten coming up. In scoring position at the Virginia Tech 14. Boyd off the play fake. And wisely throws it away. So the Hokie defense in a potential early defining moment comes up with a stop at right. Wonderful defense by J. Ron Hosley. All American last year led the country. This was a run play fake that they pulled back and we're going to throw it into a fade into the corner of the end zone and Hosley could not have, have had better coverage on DeAndre Hopkins. Just even when Hopkins went to break long Hosley was there the entire time. In comes Chandler Cantazaro from 31 yards out. And just squeezes it inside that right upright and looks heavenward and says thanks. Dabo Sweeney. Tell you what, this guy is Red Bull and espresso all wrapped up <laughs> in the one. Wilson trying to atone for that turnover when we come back. These guys are showing that you truly care about them. Here we go. Hit it, I want them to have fun, and I want them to win a championship. I don't know how to be anything else. If I gotta, if I've got to be something that I'm not, it's just not going to work. Certainly doesn't lack for energy and enthusiasm on the sidelines. A lot of his players to a man say they just love playing with him in four. And I think it's easy to judge a guy like that and say, oh, you know, he's kind of a fly by night. But when you get to talk to Dabo Sweeney and the program he's put together, there's a whole lot of substance behind him as a man, as a coach. So if he wants to celebrate winning, let him do it any way he wants. <laughs> on the return from the 11, it's Wilson. Put his head down and. Makes it just across the 30 yard line. Clemson Tiger player took a big hit. Now they need to be careful. Breland is out on yeah. his feet. They need to be careful. The, the players went to help him up off the field. And when someone is hurt down on the field, you need to just step away. It looked to me like Breland took the shot to the chest, not to the head. But again, now that we know what we know about concussions and everything else, oh boy, that's straight helmet to helmet. Mm, 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 mm. And unfortunately the players from Clemson went to help their teammate up and you're not supposed to do that. Let the man lay there and have the medical staff come out and tend to him. First and ten. Thomas out of the shotgun. Boykin. And he's brought down almost immediately at the 32 yard line by Brewer. Let's take one more look at that hit. And notice the difference between what Breland did and what we saw Carlton Lewis do when he caused the fumble on Wilson and that's the dangerous part when a player is hit in the head you've just got to let him lay there. There's Wilson again. Gains about two on the play. Be third and long coming up or any more making the stop. But going back to the hit that Carlton Lewis put on Wilson to knock the ball out remember how his head was up. Your neck works if your head is up your neck works as a shock absorber. So you're not going to compress your neck when you drop your neck and you put your vertebrae in a straight line. That's when you have a catastrophic injury. It's nice to see Breland get up under his own power even though he was a little bit shaky. Third and seven coming up. A little bit of a shaky start here for the Hokies. Thomas completes it. 
But tackled immediately is Danny Cole. A gain of only three, and they'll have to punt. Jonathan Meeks making the tackle on the play. And his Clemson defense, which has given up some numbers so far this year, pretty staunch here in the first quarter. And there's a look at Breland on the sidelines being examined. Bad series for Virginia Tech. How so? You come out, you get no positive, and you don't let your defense get any rest at all, and you put Clemson right back on the field. Scott Demler punting from his own 23. High snap. But he corrals the ball and gets off a high spiral. Fair catch called, and it's going to be down at about the 36-yard line. With 19 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. The Clemson Tigers and Virginia Tech Hokies both undefeated. At 4-0, a couple of quarterbacks making their respective fifth career starts. Both of them from the state of Virginia here. And uh, you would expect that Taj Boyd would be a little extra amped up coming into this game from nearby Hampton Roads, Virginia. Home of Aaron Brooks and Tyrod Taylor. And about 60% uh, of this. <laughs> Some talent in Loki's roster. Yeah, they've, they've been recruiting over in that area since the late 80s. Boyd on the waggle, wide open, Allen near the first down, and he got it, brought down by Eddie Whitley, picks up 11 yards on the play. And this is what Dabo Sweeney, when he hired Chad Morris from Tulsa to come over, he said, I wanted an aggressive play caller, and I wanted some tempo to my offense. Watch how fast Clemson goes, and because Virginia Tech did nothing on offense, this defense starting to look a little tired. That's going to be the end of the first quarter. Chad Morris's offense starting to get in gear a little bit. First 15 minutes in the books here in this ACC showdown. Back to Lane Stadium for the second period after this. Hey, folks, the New River is arguably one of the oldest rivers in the world and the oldest in the United States. It's one of the only major rivers that flows, get this, south to north. Rivers typically flow downhill in a southerly direction. The Nile River, to name one, is a little bit older. Interesting. Do you know why it flows south to north? You're from this state. You tell me. I have no idea. I was asking you. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> i got to look that up on uh, ask.com or something. Right now, the Hokies feeling like they're going upstream. Down by three with a couple of turnovers on defense here. Ellington trying the right side. Into Hokie territory, the 49 picks up three on the play. Ellington with a uh, pulled hamstring against Auburn was not quite 100% against Florida State. A lot of young guys behind him, so they hope that Ellington, the junior, can go. They were expecting him to be close to 100% for the game. I don't see him missing a step. On second and seven, Boyd with the bootleg under heat. Just got rid of it and incomplete. Let's check in with Wendy in the studio. Wendy? Mark, thank you. A Taco Bell studio update. Clemson took care of Auburn two weeks ago. Those Tigers this week on the road at South Carolina. Barrett Trotter, though, picked off by CeCe Whitlock, his second interception of the game. Touchback for the Gamecocks, and South Carolina leads 13-9. Also, Michigan State over Ohio State, a three-point game, 10-7. All right, Wendy, third and seven. This Clemson team a couple of weeks ago struggled against Wendy's alma mater, Wofford. Learning a lot about themselves here. Boyd, incomplete, almost interception. Hosley couldn't hang on to it as he got twisted around in the secondary. And I think this crowd had an impact on that play. There was communication where they were trying to change the play. Quint Kessenick was talking about what Bud Foster was going to try to do with his defense. He's got some veteran defensive backs where he was going to move in and out and disguise coverage. That time, I think Taj Boyd was a little confused before the snap. He threw that right into coverage. And even if there would have been an interception, it probably would have been about like a punt. So it wouldn't have been huge, but still, I think, I think the crowd played a factor there. Come after Zimmerman a little bit. He gets off a low line drive. And this one carries into the end zone. It'll come back out to the 20, a net of 29 yards on a 49 yard punt. 
Well, folks, with back-to-back -back wins to start the chase, points leader Tony Stewart goes for three in a row, while defending champ Jimmy Johnson will look to bounce back from a surprisingly shaky start. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Dover. Coverage beginning Sunday at 1 Eastern time on ESPN with NASCAR Countdown presented by Napa. Virginia hey. Tech's defense does their job and gets their offense back out there. Logan Thomas looking at first down and 10 from his own 20. Wide open in the flat. That's Oglesby close to the first down. Brought down by Robinson. What does this offense have to do to get some sort of rhythm and get things going here on the rails? I think that they have to continue to run the ball between the tackles. I think that is where this offense can milk the clock a little bit, wear it down, get David Wilson back into the flow. Oglesby's a nice changeup back that they can bring in. But uh, Logan Thomas... I, I, I just don't feel like he's in that same rhythm as Boyd is yet in this offense, so rely a little bit more on your run game. Second and one. Holes in motion. Oglesby at the tailback spot, and Oglesby breaks a couple of tackles and gets a first down out beyond the 40-yard line. Some tough running by Josh Oglesby. How much of a... You think he's in there because of the fumble that Wilson had a moment ago? They've been rotating these guys a little bit. Oglesby is a good player, but that's three fumbles in, in four, four games and a quarter. And uh, we know that Frank Beamer, they started winning in this program because of special teams and taking care of the ball when they were Brian Stein's bringing the office coordinator. If we get Thomas. Throws it low. His receiver was well covered. Joey Phillips, the intended target. Be second down and 10. Not a bad throw in the dirt. Uh, Tom's telling us that he learned a lot about leadership from his uh, predecessor, uh, Tyrod Taylor, who you say was a little bit underrated as a leader on the field. Huh? When Tyrod Taylor began starting here, there were so many young players around him. I think a lot of people looked and said, oh, he's kind of an athletic guy, not much of a quarterback. And they didn't see his progression. And here's a guy who's now in the NFL. The Ravens apparently love him, but I don't think that Tyrod Taylor got the recognition he deserved as a leader. And uh, Thomas talked about a lot about how calm he was all the time. Looking calm here with time to throw. And now running out of the pocket, tiptoes out of bounds at the 43, and a flag thrown on the play on the Clemson side of the field. Andre Branch, the perpetrator on the play for Clemson. They're going to tag some more yards onto the end of this run. First of all, after the play was over, 4-0 on the defense, 15 yards, automatic, first down. I know that we want to protect players, but when defensive guys are hustling like this, go low, that's not a penalty. It's just not a penalty. You have the defender, Richard Hall, going low, and, the and Branch comes in and puts his hands just to kind of brace himself. I'm not sure that that's a 15-yard penalty. First and 10, Hokies with the ball at the Clemson 43. Oglesby still in the tailback. Boykin in motion. Oglesby stopped up. He might even lose a yard on the play. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Goodman and Christian making the stop. And we talked to Thomas. They seem like they put a lot on him at the line of scrimmage. Said that he checked 12 times last week and he got all his checks right. Does he look comfortable today to you? Not quite yet. Uh, it still seems to me the ball's not coming out as smoothly as you'd like it. Uh, he looks like he's a little indecisive running the ball. And I, this is his first big game. Let's not forget that this was not the toughest schedule that Virginia Tech played to start. Appalachian State, East Carolina, Arkansas State, and Marshall. And he still looks like he's getting his feet under him a little bit. And Oglesby got the handoff and had nowhere to go. He loses a few more back in the 48-yard line. Anthony making the stop, a loss of five. Well, Thomas, one problem he won't have, partner, is uh, seeing over his offensive lineman at six foot, six inches tall. He stacks up as one of the tallest 
starting quarterbacks in the country and a highly recruited basketball player and he said you know the position I played in basketball there's a ton of gifted <laughs> six foot six athletes not so much at tight which he thought was going to be a tight end coming in so he chose to play college football instead of basketball on third and long let's see how he runs the ball a little bit loose puts his head down and appears to have enough for the first down let's see where they spot it nice run that time by Logan Thomas you are right though He's got to tuck that ball away. He's obviously got big hands. He's a tall guy, but when he takes off, that ball cannot be thrown. He got it in there late, but you'd like to see that a little bit earlier because you never know if some linebacker's tracking behind you and is going to take a tomahawk chalk to that ball. Chop, excuse me, and if, he, if they do that, that ball's coming out. On first and 10, Oglesby got a little bit of a block from his quarterback. Logan Thomas and uh, when you look at the size of Logan Thomas uh, you know Cam Newton kind of created a new breed a, a new prototype for tall quarterbacks in a sense hasn't he I think the game because of the advent of quarterbacks running the ball more than they had in the past 15 or 20 years I think you're starting to see athletes like Cam Newton Logan Thomas who maybe would play tight end or H back or maybe even play another sport come into football and now because of the spread offense and the running quarterbacks in a lot of these spreads you're starting to look at these big athletes and say they're one of the best athletes on the field with size why not let them play quarterback here he is out of the shotgun on second and nine going up top lots of coverage and incomplete in the end zone intended for Danny Cole Sensabaugh back there defending on the play well, this is only his fifth career start he played in only seven games last year mostly in cleanup time and garbage time a little surprised I, you know I know it, unless David Wilson is hurt I'm a little surprised he has not seen he did have the fumble but he is your most explosive back we have not seen him once in this drive I know you want to get guys time but with this type of athlete I don't want him staying on the sideline at third and nine sorry Jimmy. Thomas given time into traffic and almost intercepted on the play by Jonathan Meeks he wasn't close on that one and it's fourth and nine coming up well one thing Virginia Tech is doing is they're leaving a lot of people in to pass protect but what that means is Logan Thomas doesn't have as many people to look for down the field that's two passes in a row where he threw the ball into coverage and frankly there was no one open so he had to try to make a play I think Virginia Tech needs to start relying on their offensive line a little more get more people out into the route Demler into punt on fourth and nine. And he just tries to get it inside the 10. And it's going to be into the end zone instead. A 32 yard punt. And it'll come out to the 20 yard line, just missing by a few inches. 3 0 on the scoreboard. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. We'll be right back after this. Three nothing, Clemson leading Virginia Tech. ESPN College Football Prime Time presented by Miller Light. Kill it with this fast. Nine twenty to go here in the first Still half. Still here. Ellington over the left side of the offensive line gains about four on the play Andre Ellington a 5'10 190 pound junior the team's leading rusher this offense remade reworked and redone under Chad Morris the first year offensive coordinator former high school coach for 16 years and the former offensive coordinator at Tulsa Ellington again over the left side again and uh, boy, what a Courageous hire by Dabo Sweeney, right? <laughs> yes. A lot of uh, the Clemson faithful thinking, wait a minute, this guy was in high school two years ago. Yeah, he had one good year at Tulsa. What are you doing? But when you get to know Chad Morris and the type of coach he is, and then you look at his offense, that was a pretty good hire. Yeah. Well, the offensive number is certainly impressive right now.
Third and four. Pass complete. And a first down out to the 42-yard line to DeAndre Hopkins. A 16-yard pickup in our Edward Jones FaceTime profile this week featuring Chad Morris. Well, Double Sweeney said that he started off with seven candidates and then narrowed it down to five and then three and then Chad Morris, the finalist. And almost didn't get him. Yeah. Todd Graham left Tulsa to go to Pittsburgh and Chad interviewed for the head coaching position. Of course, didn't get the job. Boyd up top. Incomplete into double coverage. Intended for Martavis Bryant. But Fuller and Exum were back there. Chad Morris said that was a really difficult 24 hours. He told Dabo that he was coming to Clemson on a Sunday. Todd Graham got the job at Pittsburgh on a Monday. He interviewed for the head coaching job on Tuesday. And Dabo called him and said, hey, uh, Chad, you told me you were coming here. <laughs> and uh, he honored his commitment. And I think Tiger fans are pretty happy about it. Uh, Dabo says we think like kind of like brothers. On second and ten, picked off. Hosley, his third of the season. He had a beat on that one right from the snap. The one thing that Jaron Hosley does, as well as anybody as I've seen in a long time in college football, is cheat. Did you see how he came off? He was in zone coverage. He immediately saw the route that Taj Boyd was going to throw to. He came off of his coverage underneath it and made a play. It's rare that you allow a player to do this, but Bud Foster has so much respect for how much this young man studies and knows the game. That was a sensational play. First and ten. Did they go after them right away here? Why wouldn't you? Lining up out of the eye. They run it. And Wilson back in the ball game. Branch making the stop. But Hosley telling us in our meetings with him yesterday, he likes to take risks. And he jumped it, and it paid off big time. Unbelievable how quickly he came off. He jumped the route. He knew where it was going. A, a lot of that has to do with understanding the spacing of the offense and where they're trying to attack you. He saw the bunch run to the outside, so he knew he had to get back to the inside because that was the only place for it to throw. Second and 13 out of the shotgun. Thomas completes it. Cole at the 23, brought down by Brewer in a first down. Let's go to Wendy. Mark, thank you very much. Robert Griffin III had not thrown an interception in 171 attempts, but this one, courtesy of Arthur Brown, could cost Griffin the game. 36-35, just about a minute to play. And in baseball news, the NLDS, Milwaukee over Arizona 4-1, and the Phillies are beating the Cardinals 6-3. All right, Wendy, third and two here. A little stretch play. Wilson gets to the edge and then some. Keeps the legs moving. And it's first and goal, Hokies. Phillips with a great block out front, too. It's all about cut blocks. Phillips gets the defender, Jonathan Meeks, on the ground from his fullback position. And that was that safety's coming down to force the ball back inside. But because the fullback Phillips got a nice cut block, Wilson was able to bounce it. And it's first and goal from the six after that 18-yard game. I don't care how much he fumbles, I want that guy in the game <laughs> if I'm Virginia Tech. It doesn't seem a like little facetious. But he, he doesn't strike us as the type of guy that lacks for confidence, even though he might fumble once in a while as Frank Beamer gets a timeout. One thing about Frank Beamer, we asked him why he is able to keep going after 25 years and keep it fresh. He says, we recruit great kids, talented ones too, back after this. Here's what's happening now. Mark Jones along with Ed Cunningham and Quint Kessenick down in the field. Clemson looking for its third consecutive win against a ranked opponent. Be the first time they've done that in school history and coming up ahead. Hey, David Wilson trying to bounce back from that fumble that he had earlier. But a spirited run a few moments ago has the Hokies in scoring range here. Yeah. 
Wilson gets it again. Keeps those legs churning. Man, and he really moves the pot. It's unreal. You know, you look at him, and I'd never met the young man in person until yesterday. And we were talking to the sports information folks, media relations folks from Virginia Tech, and I said, you know, he's so much bigger than you think when you meet him. He said, and they told us, everyone says that. Because when you see him on film, he looks slight. And I think right now, why not go to him again? Right between the tackles, let this young man finish the drive. Second and goal. Wilson again. Dragged down from behind, just getting back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and goal coming up. Christian making the stop on the play for the Tigers. So, big one coming up here for the Hokies. I think because Christian crashed down so hard from that backside defensive end, don't be surprised if you see a bootleg by Logan Thomas here. Back to a fake play to the right, back to his left. Ryan Stein's playing the offensive coordinator, dialing up the play here on third and goal. And the Clemson Tigers want to talk things over on the sidelines. Well, Ed, coming into this game, there was so much talk about Frank Beamer's strength of schedule or lack thereof and Clemson's 4-0 record with their consecutive wins against top 25 opponents. Here we are with 4.44 to go in the first half of play. How surprised are you that it's only a 3-0 game? Very. Uh, Clemson came in, obviously. They put 35 uh, on Florida State, which is a very good defense, although they were minus Greg Reed. But not as much surprise when you really study Virginia Tech defensively. This is a good group. They had some breakdowns early in the year, especially against Marshall. But right now, they have a guy named Jaron Hosley, right. who is as good as any defensive back in the country, and that's why they're on the doorstep to score. Does this low-scoring game favor one team or the other? Does it favor Virginia Tech? Are they that type of tough team? The reason I think it favors it is because Clemson in this new offense may not be used to having to slug it out. They're used to being able to score almost every drive. So the question becomes, in, in a battle that's like this kind of a more heavyweight Two teams slugging it out. Can we hang in there? Because we're used to moving the ball up and down the field and scoring at will. Third and goal. And they put it on the ground. There's a flag first. Four start. 75. Offense. Wow, coming out of the timeout. The Hokies implode a little bit. How does that change potential play calling here when you move it back a little well, bit? Well, you, you could have had a run dialed up. Now you're at third and goal from, call it, the just about the seven. Now I think you, you have to look at a throw. I mean, you may want to, you, you could think of a draw, but I think this is a throw with some type of maybe slant from an inside receiver. But it takes the run game, I think, out of your package. Thomas to pass. Gets rid of it, an incomplete fourth down intended for Jared Boykin. So the Clemson defense, and Kevin Steele, their defensive coordinator, coming up with a little bit of a stand there. And the big difference when you go from third and goal inside the two to third and goal at the seven, now the defensive line knows it's likely going to be a pass, and so they are not thinking run at all, and that pocket collapsed very quickly. Cody Jornell coming in to attempt this field goal from 24 yards out. He's four of seven on the season. And he knocks it through. Tied at three with 4.35 to go here in this ACC clash of powerhouses. We'll be back with more from Lane Stadium right after this. is tired fast visit 5hourenergy.com AT&T get it faster with 4G rethink possible and discover car it pays to switch it pays to discover I'll tell you what I am in meat and 
charcoal grill and barbecue heaven here. And looking at these pictures. Yeah, you got to go with the sauce. Yeah, accoutrements make it all happen. That's what that's what brings the food alive. Although if it's slow cooked properly, sometimes you don't even need the sauce. <laughs> From the four, this is Jerron Brown. Reverses field. And Brown with a nice return out to the 38-yard line and a flag thrown late on the play as well. Nice 34-yard kickoff return by Jerron Brown. against Wiley Brown right there number 40 for the Hokies diving at the end looked like he missed to yeah, me Ed. I'm not so sure that, that's another one that they just need to put the flag back in their pocket it was the same with branch on the sideline he was just trying to slow himself down someone needs to call that play off some another official needs to see that he missed and he wasn't going in with malintent that's a bad call Boyd out of the shotgun. Watkins juggled it and got out of the way before he got drilled as we check in with Wendy. Mark, thank you. A Dr. Pepper ACC conference update. We've got NC State and Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jacket leading 35-14. Tevin Washington hits Roddy Jones for the 38-yard strike. 45-35, Georgia Tech on top. Second and 10 back here, Wendy. Sammy Watkins, the dynamic freshman, relatively quiet so far. Boyd overthrows Allen, the tight end, and it'll be third and long. What do you see it happening in that matchup with, with Watkins and Hosley so far? I mean, we haven't called Watkins' name all that much. They're switching around their coverage a lot. They're showing a lot of different looks to Taj Boyd. And I think, if anything, what they've done is they've made Boyd's eyes move around the field, and he's not been able to find them. Communication can't be easy down there. Boyd found a receiver. Ellington got enough for the first down. And it looked like he went through every possible progression on the field. And the only way that it, this was a successful play was because of the protection by the offensive line. Hard on him a little bit early in that first quarter. But he went to three receivers down the field. Virginia Tech had them blanketed. Did a nice job of shuffling up into the pocket, finding a safety valve, the running back. Great poise that time by Taj Boyd. Back to pass. Watkins overthrown and incomplete. Chris Hill came over to make a play on the ball, and it'll be second down and 10. Awfully dangerous throw by Boyd. Chris Hill was in deep coverage. Virginia Tech runs a really interesting cover two. Two deep, you usually think two deep safeties. They actually roll their corners back to play deep and bring their safeties up. An invention of Bud Foster that a lot of people around the country are starting to implement. Second and 10. They hand it off this time, and Watkins brought down after a gain of about two on the play. They do a lot of different things with him, move him around. And uh, you know, one thing about Sammy Watkins, a very humble young man as a true freshman, called the hardest worker, or one of the hardest workers on the team. It's great when your best player is your hardest worker, too, right? The best teams are always that way. Mm -hmm. A buddy of mine went to the Dallas Cowboys in the early 90s, and he said the hardest working guy on the team was Michael Irvin. You see that when it when it Talented guy is hard work that raises everybody's level and work ethic up. On third and eight. And Clemson calls a timeout. They've got one remaining now in the half. Clemson. This is a 30 second timeout. We're going to stay right here. 
Let's go downstairs to Quinn Kessinick. And these fans continuing to cause mayhem. They've been on their feet the entire game. It continues to rain. It's kind of like a, in between a drizzle and a steady rain. And let me tell you, Mark, it's cold. And the difference, you know, it's in the low 40s right now with about a 10-mile-an-hour wind. But for these players, you know, I'm standing next to the Clemson heaters on the sideline. How often did you see heaters at a football game on October 1st? Clemson played Florida State last week, upper 80s. Tonight, it's in the 40s. So kind of hard for these players to transition into football weather. And I think for Clemson especially with that heat, not that it hasn't been hot in Blacksburg, Virginia through the summer, but I think this is a shock to their system. You see a lot of guys, Sammy Watkins, you know, has his hands folded over while he's waiting for the kick, and we've seen the ball come out a little funny on Boyd a couple of times. I think this weather's had a bigger impact on Clemson so far. Third and long, eight to go out of the shotgun. Little double move, and Watkins, well, he might be a little bit cold, but he was cool on that catch. First down, Clemson on the 23-yard pickup. And the young man out of Fort Myers with a nice grab here. Boyd gets the ball out so nicely. He's got a short, compact motion. He's almost always on balance. Went through his reads. As soon as Watkins clear, he threw a nice high ball over the coverage. Working on board on the sidelines. Hard me on Watkins. Boyd keeps it. Great move inside and all the way down to the three-yard line. Gain of about nine on the play. Taj Boyd. Talk about his decision making. Well, that was a perfect example of that because that's that's one of the coolest plays I think in college football. He's running down the line and he has a run pass option. It's not a screen or a pitch. He can actually throw it down the field. There was coverage. He decided to keep it. Picks up nice yardage. Second and one. Ellington straight ahead gets the first down. It'll be first and goal for the Clemson Tigers from just inside the two yard line. And I think if you're Virginia Tech with two timeouts, you need to start thinking about your offense. You know you want to stop him. You want Bud Foster's defense to stop him. But this is where I think Virginia Tech needs to think about saving some time for Logan Thomas and his crew. On first and goal. Flag down. Ellington into the end zone. Touchdown. I believe they have an illegal formation. Offside. Defense. A rule. Penalty is the car. Results in the touchdown. And Clemson has the game's first touchdown. Andre Ellington with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Just looked at the picture of that play. There were legal four, four men in the backfield, so they were completely legal. But how hard is it when there are two people lined up behind the offensive line and a tight end, and then you run it the other way? So Virginia Tech has to overshift their defense to their left, and then you run it back the other way. Just another example of Chad Morris and... the different types of things he can do and I guess they're going to take a look at this to see if Ellington was actually in. There's one more look at Ellington. Tough to tell from that angle but yeah. he looked to have an awful lot of momentum and of course unless there is indisputable video evidence that he did not cross. There's one more look. Where's the knee touch? He hand walks. That looks like a touchdown to me. Yeah, that and, ball was over. And again, from that angle, there is not indisputable video evidence that he did not score. So, don't believe they're going to be able to overturn this. Overturn this. Well, here's a look at the three options. You can reverse it, confirm it, or have it stay as it was, as it was called on the field. The ruling on the field stands. TD. And when they say the play stands, that means that there wasn't indisputable evidence to either confirm it or overturn it, which is what we saw in the video. And a zero now with the extra point. Ellington with the game's first touchdown with 1.49 to go in the first half. 
Clemson team that comes into this game averaging 38 points a game and over 500 yards of offense, leading by seven. Looking for another statement win. Looking to knock off the Hokies. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Back after this. Celebrating its seventh year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities, general scholarship funds for each field goal, an extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.4 million in scholarship monies. Mark Jones, Ed Cunningham, and Kessinick under the lights here at Lane Stadium. In this ACC battle between Clemson and Virginia Tech, the 31st meeting all time. Clemson trying to snap that five-game losing streak against the Hokies. And Lucy just knocked the ball off the tee. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Come on, Lucy, let us play. <laughs> the crowd is booing the win. They haven't had much to cheer about here. Just three points on the board. Gregory from the five out near the 30. Let's check in with Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you. Coming up on the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report, Jordan Jefferson returns as the Tigers of LSU roll over Kentucky. Arkansas complete to come back to stun Texas A&M and a Big Ten blowout truly in Ann Arbor. Todd McShay and Robert Smith join me on the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report. All right, thanks a lot, Wendy. First and 10. For about the 28 yard line. Virginia Tech with two timeouts remaining. We'll see if they can put some points on the board. And a bad start there on first down. Good pressure up front by Goodman. And this is where Clemson's defensive line, which the coaches have been very happy about, very productive defensive line. Of course, you lose Daquan Bowers into the NFL. So a lot of guys had to step up. Thompson, Goodman. They're not very deep, so they can't afford any injuries. But this is a place in the ball game where Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator, can rely on his front four to get pressure. That was a four-man rush that Logan Thomas had no chance whatsoever. Statistically, look at Clemson's defense so far. But only giving up three points so far tonight. Thomas slings it and caught by Cole. Smart news. Gets out of bounds at the 33-yard line, picking up six on the play. Knew Why is that a good play? Was not knew he was not going to get any more yardage than where he was, but knew he could bounce it outside, stop the clock, and keep one of those two timeouts. 133 to go in the first half. Third down and about four coming up. Thomas on the slant, well defended, broken up. Sensabaugh making the play. It was intended for Danny Cole, and it's fourth down. One thing that Logan Thomas is going to have to start doing is training his eyes a little better. What do you Sensabaugh, mean by that? Sensabaugh read him the whole time. It was a third and short. They already showed down on the goal line on third and goal from the seven that they wanted to throw the slant. Sensabaugh knows that he might get the slant. He read his eyes the whole way. And Thomas never came off where he wanted to throw that ball. And Sensabaugh was able, able to actually cut in front of the wide receiver. Nice play by Sensabaugh. Now Clemson with one timeout remaining is going to get the ball. Not a decent field position here. A little rugby style punt for the first time tonight by Denver. And it takes a hokey bounce. Down to the 31 yard line. Well, there are two more great college football games tonight on ESPN and ABC. First on ESPN at 8, Chip Kelly. Uh, fighting Irish look to uh, pardon me Brian Kelly's fighting Irish look to take on the uh, Boilermakers and then part of tailgate week fired up by Kingsford charcoal and now Clemson gets the ball back minute 19 a timeout left they use those two timeouts when they had some issues with communication but because they're a hurry up offense no sweat Ellington out of bounds near the first down gets out of bounds picked up nine on the play 
They have plenty of time to get something, at least in field goal range, right? I mean, absolutely. And they have two kickers. Yeah, Spencer Benton is the guy that handles the long field goals. Canizaro, the shorter one. Figure you want to get down about the 25 yard line and then see if you can't make a couple plays beyond the sticks or towards the end zone. Boyd with plenty of time. Overshoots his receiver a little bit high for DeAndre Hopkins. And Hopkins had some room. A third down and short coming up. Clemson still with that one timeout remaining. And Boyd's going to want that ball back because that was an excellent job by Hopkins. He, he, he saw his quarterback flare out. He ran right with him. Now third and short. I think it's all about the first down. Let's get a new fresh set of down. So don't be surprised if you see a power run here by Clemson. 50% tonight on third downs. Boyd keeps it himself and gets the first down across the 40. Under a minute to go now, and Clemson uh, not going to use its timeout yet. And you want to go very fast here because the clock will start as soon as the ball is set for the ready and the chains move. So have your play and get ready to go. Watkins lined up wide to the bottom of your screen. He's their money receiver. They look his way and they overthrow him. Well covered that time by Chris Hill. And when are you going to use his time out here, it looks like. Or do you use it here? No, not with no, the incomplete wait. pass. Yeah, I'd wait for it. And I think now what you've got to think about 15 20 yards so you've shown you want to throw the stretch maybe another stretch play with someone running an in route at 15 or 20 yards in the middle of the field because the clock will stop with the chains moving got to get just across midfield for the first down Boyd sacked back at the 40 yard line by James Gale that's his fourth and a half sack and now mm -hmm. they use the timeout yeah that was a really conservative call I, I that was a it looked to me like a design quarterback draw. Yeah, he's pulling it down to run. Second and ten. You've got a timeout. You've got a quarterback that you're comfortable with. I think you I think you let that one fly. 30 seconds to go. Clemson trying to get in field goal range when we come back. Determined spirit lives at Clemson. Always has. We're passionate. We're tenacious, and we're solid orange. But most of all, we're a family. Sometimes loud, always proud, ever loyal. With a determined spirit that says, bring it on. Go Tigers. Third and long coming up for Clemson. 30 seconds to go in the half. Out of timeouts. Boyd looked to get his receiver Hopkins on the out and up but well covered and good pressure up front by J.R. Collins and it's fourth down and guess who was in coverage on that out and up J. Ron Hosley I, I cannot be more impressed with this young man he's not a very big guy 5'11 170 pounds but he just has a sensational feel for the game Caught at the 10 yard line. Hosley looking for a couple blocks. Continuing to dance around and has a little bit of an alley there. And decides to <laughs> hit the pause button. <laughs> 48 yard punt. A 13 yard return, but he probably ran about 40. Don't waste it all on a seven yard return at the end of the half. And we were talking during the last break. This is the type of game where it feels like the players are still feeling each other out and the playmakers like Hosley. Does it come down to him just making a play and guys like him? I think so. But the surprising part for me is that Clemson seems like they're a little out of sorts. And here's a team that's played Auburn and Florida State in back-to-back -back weeks and beat them. You'd expect them, I think, to be playing a little higher level. Well, Frank Beamer's team going into the locker room. Down by seven, 10 to three, an unusual spot for Clemson, who has trailed at halftime 
in three of their first four games as we go downstairs to Quint with Davo Sweeney. Coach, you said you had to be physical this week. How have you held up in that department? Well, we're on the road and we're playing a great football team in a tough environment and we're up a touchdown. So uh, defense is, is playing good. Offense is, uh, we've missed a few opportunities, but hey, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're going in with a lead, but hey, we got, we got a whole nother half and we're going to play a little better. You and Coach Morris have spent a lot of time with the offensive line behind the bench. What, what have you been emphasizing with that? Well, we've had a, a few miscommunications, and uh, we've got to make sure we, we've got our protection dialed in. And uh, so we can, you know, we got some things there, but if we can just get, get the protection cleaned up and we can throw and catch it. But, hey, it's, uh, it's, 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 this is what you'd expect with two good football teams battling it out. And, you know, we're going to see if we can win in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Sweeney telling us earlier we're changing the culture here at Clemson and perception from the inside. Right now, a good look on the scoreboard for them as we go to the Outback Steakhouse Studio Halftime Report. When? Andre Ellington with his fourth rushing touchdown this season. His Tigers are on the road in Blattsburg and have a 10-3 lead at the half. Under the lights here at Lane Stadium, the 31st meeting all time between Clemson and Virginia Tech. It's college football primetime presented by Miller Lite. Mark Jones along with Ed Cunningham. Quint Kessenick down on the field. Thanks for coming aboard, Ed. In the first half, the thing that really jumps off the page, I thought, was that Virginia Tech offensively seemed a little arrhythmic right now. No juice going on. You know, and you've got two quarterbacks that are both making their fifth start, Taj Boyd and Logan Thomas. Both of them looking a little shaky. And I think for Logan... I think the key is they have to give him some easy throws. Move him out of the pocket some. He can run 4 6 five, 40 guys. So get him out, get him a lather, and then get David Wilson going. Virginia Tech, to me, doesn't have a receiver that can really stretch the field. And so I think they're going to have to do some things moving out of the pocket for Logan. Let's take a look at our expert breakdown brought to you by Farmers Insurance. Well, the play that led to the only touchdown of the first half. This is such a tough play to defend. It is a read option by the quarterback to Ellington. And as Boyd comes out, he has a run throw option. They're actually running a go route to Adam Humphreys on the outside. So he reads this. He sees the coverages there. And because of the lead block by Dwayne Allen, the tight end, he's able to take it down inside the two yard line. So tough to defend. It comes down to the 18 yard line. Gregory. Right around the 20 yard line it'll be first down and 10 as we take a look at our first half statistics the time of possession pretty much even three turnovers in total two of them by Virginia Tech we talked about the Hokies offense not really showing what it can do potentially in the first half they're gonna get a chance here to show what they can do here on the first possession of the third quarter. out of the shotgun Wilson in the backfield to his left and Wilson gets the first carry of the third quarter and makes it a good one gets about nine as we go downstairs Quint what did Frank Beamer have to say yeah I grabbed him as he was coming out of the locker rooms coaching his 300th football game here but it was simple football one on one he says take advantage of missed opportunities he mentioned the fumble the interception but the key play in the first half he felt the offsides violation at the goal line coming out of a timeout a play that really was misdirected from the start he, he felt that that play really was the difference in the game so far yeah, interesting Ed you had said that it really changed the whole scenario from what they could call yeah you went from a uh, third and short where you could call any play you want throw pass draw whatever you want and then you go back to third and seven third and goal from the seven and uh, Clemson knew Tech had to throw it and they pinned their ears back and got good pressure single back set first and ten Thomas given plenty of time Wilson makes the catch 
Great move by Wilson. Picks up about 15 and another first down. And Logan Thomas showing a little bit of touch on that pass. And that's one thing that they've worked very hard with him. He has a cannon. He can throw it really hard. But they've worked extremely hard with when you're throwing, especially to a back, you don't have to fire the ball. And you're right, not thrown completely accurately, but because it's a little softer, David Wilson can make an adjustment on the ball. There's Wilson trying to hit the edge. Oh, tripped up nicely. Good tackle from the backside. Jonathan Willard making the stop for the Tigers. Willard, a guy who immediately Kevin Steele wanted to talk about. You see that big brace on his left elbow. Had a horrific injury last year. And they said very surprised he came back and has been as consistent as he has. They weren't sure what they were going to get after he missed most of last season with that elbow injury. They call him the unsung hero of that defense. Second and nine coming up after the nice stop there by Willard. Wilson again cuts it back. Well, that Clemson defense can run a little bit. They chase him down and bring him down on Clemson's side of midfield at the 48. Picks up about three. Third down coming up and about six to go. Wilson had that fumble in the first half. And they, Virginia Tech has liked the slant on this down and distance to the inside receiver. They're running a bunch over to this side and a single receiver to the top. So if I'm a cornerback for Clemson, I might jump it. They look to throw. Thomas going to take off. Makes a good move, but comes up short of the first down. At about the 45-yard line, got three on the play. And once again, Willard makes his second stop on this sequence. What an excellent job by Willard. He's dropping back. Logan Thomas does a nice job. It looked to me when he took off like he was going to get it. But Willard very quickly came out of his coverage responsibility and came back to make the play. Demler bunting his fourth of the night. DeAndre Hopkins standing on his own 10-yard line. And uh, the good news to report is that uh, it just stopped raining. And the punter drops it. Demler drops it and then shanks one. Mm. And you can hear the boos. This has been a difficult part of the game of the team so far this year for Virginia Tech. Usually so solid in the punting game. And Demler, who's been struggling, and this was the first time that they were going to allow him to do a rugby-style kick. The first time ever Frank Beamer in his illustrious career as a special teams coach was going to let someone rugby kick. I'm uh, pretty sure they're going to scrap it now. Well, uh, Beamer a little bit conventional usually in his approach the unconventional rugby pick, pick not working that time an 11 yard punt and Clemson on its own 33 boy downfield caught first down and then some Jerron Brown into Hokie territory so after the bad punt they hit him right away with a first down a pickup of 25 and this is where Chad Morris will try to make you pay a bad punt, good field position, immediately at it, and here comes Clemson in this fast-paced offense trying to get Virginia Tech on their heels. He's a very aggressive offensive coach. A 25-yard gain, the longest one of the night. Ellington, nice cutback. Down to the 32-yard line. Second down and about three to go. Whitley making the stop on the play. You're in four-down territory. Second and short. I think you're in that tweener whether you kick the field goal or not. So second down and short is a chance, I think, where you could take a shot with Watkins. See where Watkins lines up. Looks like he's down here to the bottom of the screen. And now he's in motion to the top of the screen. They look his way. Complete. Touchdown, Allen. Dwayne Allen, the phenomenal talent at tight end, puts a frown on Beamer's face. And that's his fourth touchdown catch of the season, the eighth of his career. Yeah. 
Benton in for the extra point, so the Tigers able to capitalize after that poor 11-yard punt. They get it in decent field position a few plays later. It's a touchdown. Well, it's tough, Ed, because you got to keep an eye on number two there, and 83 gets you downfield. NFL tight end comes back, makes a play. Not bad. Taj Gibson with his 14th touchdown pass of the season. Pardon me, uh, Taj uh, Boyd, his 14th touchdown pass of the season. It was talented tight end, and uh, Clemson opening up their lead to 17 to 3. Kenazaro to kick off here. It's all set up by that 11-yard uh, <laughs> punt. kenazaro has got to uh, put a little gum or something underneath that football. It's the third time tonight it's falling off. Gregory back deep, along with Wilson. Goes Gregory's way. And he's hauled down inside the 10 yard line. You can really feel Clemson's momentum mounting here. What made this last touchdown pass work? Yeah, great design, great execution. Watch the tight end, Allen. He's going to run out to block and then takes off on a route. It looks like it's going to be a wide receiver screen. And Eddie Whitley, the strong safety, has the coverage. He reads it perfectly, but Allen cuts back to the inside. It's one-on-one, -on -one. and Bud Foster told us, I thought it was a little hyperbole when he said that Allen was the best player in our league after seeing him on film and seeing him tonight I'm not sure Bud Foster's wrong in that assessment it comes into a man says that Allen only talks it but walks it as well and now a chance for Logan Thomas to counter looking for a play and makes one out of the 22 yard line caught by Coles DJ Coles with a first down pickup of 13 Logan Thomas still trying to get into some semblance of rhythm here tonight. That was the best I think I've seen him, where, where he looked good in the pocket. The ball came out quickly. It came out fast. It, it was an accurate throw. So if he can start getting to some kind of rhythm, I think the problem for Virginia Tech, though, I just don't see any great speed on the outside. So I'm not sure how many times they're going to be able to get the ball over the top of this Clemson second. Wilson and Oglesby in the backfield. Thomas keeps it himself gets about three yards on the play well this week on ESPN's Monday Night Football Reggie Wayne and Indianapolis head to Tampa to take on Josh Freeman and the Bucks Colts Buccaneers on ESPN's Monday Night Football 830 Eastern also available live on watch ESPN which by the way is a great app Ed, that I got on my iPad too. coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Single back formation, Wilson on the play fake. Thomas taking a shot to Boykin. A little bit of contact and a flag. Sensabaugh was defending Boykin on the play. And a nice throw by the quarterback that time. There was not, his receiver, Boykin, did not have a step. Defense, number 15. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. And so you want to underthrow that ball when you're going for the long throw let well I don't see the uh, pass interference there I, both players are playing handball there I that's three iffy calls so far this evening if you're asking me that referee uh, clinic you did really had an effect <laughs> on you huh oh, that, that's actually the yeah. position I yeah. learned was that back third official and you, you've got to let that one go the defender did not get an advantage with his hands handed off to Wilson Right between the tackles, man, the, you really notice, and there's a flag thrown back at the 39, but Wilson again moving the pile once the initial contact is made on the tackle. And that's going to come back. Holy number 68 offense. That's a 10 yard penalty. We'll replay the down. James Brooks, the culprit. Well, earlier tonight we saw Rashad Breland knocked hard and uh, came off the field on wobbly legs. We are told just a few moments ago that he will not return for the rest of the evening. 
told by the medical staff that he suffered a concussion. Thomas, little receiver screen. Coles breaks a tackle and makes it out to the 46 yard line. Nice run on the play by DJ Coles. He picks up 16. Here's a look at that hit that Breland took earlier. And he's and out of the game with a concussion. And, and a teachable moment here for Clemson. When a, when a player is down, do not lift him up. If there's an injury to the neck area, the last thing you want to be doing, and, and that's a natural reaction. I'm not knocking the guys who did it. It's a natural reaction, but that's got to be a teaching moment for the medical staff to tell the players, if someone looks like they're knocked out or may have a head or neck injury, leave them down. Second and four. Wilson into the boundary. Turns it upfield. He's brought down right at the first down marker by Brandon Thompson. Well, we talked about uh, Wilson's enthusiasm and energy that he brings to the field, which is priceless. Uh, there was an incident earlier this week when uh, Frank Beamer came down from descending from his tower, the coach's tower, to talk to the special teams. And uh, five minutes later, none other than David Wilson was up in Beamer's tower. Parking doing, out instructions. Doing a Beamer impersonation. <laughs> I played for uh, Don James, who was in the tower. I would have never <laughs> had the guts to go up in that tower and do an impersonation. New millennium, man. Oglesby dotting the eye, and this is him on the carry. Well read by the Tigers' defense, and nowhere to go for Oglesby, who's brought down to the 43, which rains a chorus of boos down on the field, a loss of five as Rashard Hall makes the stop. If you're going to run an outside play, why is David Wilson not in the game? You know, that we've seen this a couple of times where Oglesby has come in, and I'm not knocking Oglesby. David Wilson is your home run threat. If you're going to run the balance play on third and short, and I know Wilson had had a couple of runs during that, but the guy's in good shape, and I just don't understand why you don't have your better player in there. Hopkins back deep at the 16-yard line. Demler punting from his own 30. And after an 11-yard punt, it looks like Demler's having a bad night. Came into the game averaging just over 35 per. And uh, Frank Beamer, who specializes in special teams, has his signature thinking this one over. downtown festivities and that right there folks was created by mechanical engineering student Jesse Johnson in 2008 it's called the Hokey Tron he was uh, getting his dance on pretty good there at uh, and anything that you want to play from any of these artists works during a tailgate I'll just go ahead and rock that one out of there that one drives me crazy and uh, I think we got to get uh, white stripes seven nations army in there as well Okay, well, let's see where your musical taste is coming from. That was Bellamy picking up about seven on the play. Uh, frankly, I'm a little partial to anything by uh, Lil Wayne or Drake right now. I'm going to get rid of that one again. <laughs> Tell you how I feel about that one. I think House of, I think House of Pain needs to come right up to the top. We are the champions. Right. You can't play the tailgate. Or another one bites the dust. There's a good thing. We are another the champions, I think, is for the post game. All right. Not the tailgate. All right. Tigers running it again. This is Ellington stopped up at the line of scrimmage. Hey, Wendy Nix, what's your favorite song back in the studio? <laughs> oh, put me on the spot, Mark Jones. I had to think about it because this is a Taco Bell studio update. I can tell you this is a pretty good play right here. Tommy Reese to Michael Floyd. Notre Dame on top of Purdue, 7 nothing. But I'll have an answer next time. All right, uh, Wendy, I'm not going to let you off the hook that easy. You have to give me an answer before this show is over. Third and three on the fly sweep. Watkins didn't get there. Stopped up short by about a yard. Two, nice Watkins tackle by the Eddie Whitley. They ran the sweep into the boundary that time. Yeah, Interesting. And you hope to get the edge a lot quicker, but Virginia Tech did a wonderful job on the defensive end side 
of making him bounce that. Did you see how the defensive end, it was just subtle, but he had to bounce, and that let Whitley get up there to make the tackle. And a nice defensive stand by Virginia Tech when they needed it. 17-3, to three, time running out in the third quarter. You see those numbers. Watkins held to just 38 yards tonight in stark contrast to the last couple of games that he played against Auburn and Florida State. Virginia Tech came after it a little bit. Mosley calls for the fair catch back at the 18-yard line. Will be first down and 10. Hey, Sunday NFL countdown returns this season. New start time. Three hours of the best in the business. Chris Berman and analyst Tom Jackson, Keyshawn Johnson, Mike Ditka, Chris Carter, and NFL insiders Chris Mortensen and Adam Schefter, providing all the news and the latest updates from stadiums around the league right up to kickoff. Sunday NFL countdown presented by IBM on ESPN Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. First down and 10 for Logan Thomas and Virginia Tech. Hands it off to Wilson. Out in space a little bit. And a first down out to the 31-yard line, a gain of 13. Sensabaugh making the stop on the play. Nice job by the right side of that offensive line, James Brooks and Blake to Christopher, getting a lot of push, allowing for the cutback by Wilson. And there is one thing that's becoming very apparent in watching David Wilson. You need to tackle him full on. You need to be into his body and pull him down. If you're at his legs or have one arm out, you're not taking this young man down. Thomas hands it off to Wilson again. This time they wrap him up a little better as we check in with Wendy. Wendy, what's your song, please? All right, Mark, I have an answer. How about Rocky Like a Hurricane, the Scorpions, perfect for tailgating. And this is perfect for scoring a touchdown. How about John Brantley to Andre DeBose? And Florida is on the board 7-0 over number 3 Alabama. Thanks, Wendy, I like that selection. Let's see if we can find that in the parking lot, heading out to the car afterwards, Ed. Second down and 10. Thomas given plenty of time and now takes off. Well, he's a big guy and a hard guy to bring down. Picks up about nine out to the 40. It'll be third down and one. Rennie Moore making the tackle on the play. Talking about quarterback productivity. Doesn't always have to be pretty, but getting to third and short's a big deal. Run this one straight ahead. Don't try to go sideways. He keeps it himself. They go quick and he gets the first down. For the most part, Ed, though, with 3.54 to go in the third quarter here. One of the stories of the game has to be Clemson's defense, who has given up a lot of points in the previous two games and giving up only three to Virginia Tech here on the road. And I think a lot of it has to do, I'm not taking it away from Clemson, but they, you know, 90th team in the country coming in, giving up over 400 yards. Kevin Steele, when we talked to him this week, said, you know, we've had our defensive lines been playing well. We're a little young in the secondary. We've had some struggles, but we feel like we're getting a little closer. And, it does feel like they've made a little step. Thomas threw it off his back foot, and it's incomplete. No flag on the play. Jonathan Meeks breaking that pass up intended for Coles. Second down and 10. Moore with a little pressure up front on Thomas. You know, one thing that Virginia Tech is doing is they're leaving a lot of bodies in here, and they're only going to have three routes in, and it's just too easy to cover. And there's nothing in front of the quarterback. There's no crossing routes. And Clemson, because they know they're only going to go three men out, they can bring a little more pressure. Virginia Tech, I think, needs to get more people out. They need to run some crossing routes, and they need to get a little more dynamic in their route structure because right now Clemson seems like they kind of know what Tech has going on in the passing game. Second and ten. Underneath, and it's batted down by Rennie Moore. They're described by his defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele, as having a high motor. Quick hands. He got those big hands up and batted that one down. Setting up third down and ten now for Virginia Tech. Had the sack to end the game last week against Florida State. 265 pounds. Not the biggest guy there in the middle, but they can turn him loose on this third and long. And now here is where Virginia Tech, I think, needs to have four or five guys out in the route, put someone in the middle of the field on a post, and maybe someone underneath just beyond the sticks running a deep in route. Two receivers to each side of Thomas. 
And he's sacked back at the 34-yard line. Andre Branch with great pressure off the corner. And it's fourth down. That's his second sack of the season. And Branch from right here in the state of Virginia doing a nice job. Watch how quickly he gets off the ball against Andrew Lanier. Lanier just has no chance whatsoever. Such a quick get off. I think Branch knew the snap count. Sometimes you'll get a little key because he got off the ball before the left tackle did. It's a long and uh, this one a better punt and a derisive cheer from the fans. Hopkins watching it bounce, but lo and behold, it takes a Tigers bounce. But a better effort that time by Demler, a 29-yarder. Clemson in control when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. College football primetime presented by Miller Lite. The streets of downtown Blacksburg pretty much desolate. Unpopulated right now. Most of everybody is here at the game at Lane Stadium. Watching the home team down by a couple of touchdowns, 17 to 3. I'm Mark Jones along with Ed Cunningham and Kessinick down in the field. Tigers, first and 10, and Taj Boyd slips and falls back at the 32 under a little bit of duress from James Gale. Second down and long coming up. Gale, a young man that they expected big things out of as he got a little more mature and started fitting into this system. He's almost 260 pounds. He ran a 4, 4, 5, 40 this offseason. He's got a great motor and uses excellent technique. They fake the fly sweep. And boy, downfield, threw it behind his receiver, Dwayne Allen. Setting up a third down and long. And... Uh, well, you can't say enough about the job that Taj Boyd has done at quarterback this year. The uh, ACC Offensive Back of the Week. From locally, uh, from Hampton Roads, Virginia, not that far away from here. Say that he took just one day off all summer to go to the lake with a bunch of friends, and that was it. I got a stern talking to by Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, after spring ball. He said, it seems to me you're trying to memorize this offense instead of learning it and understanding it. And he said, lately, he's been pretty much feeling it. Looking for a little bit of rhythm here. Broken up nicely at the 41-yard line. Intended for Watkins. Chris Hill with his second pass breakup tonight. And it's three and out for the Tigers on offense. And you get the feeling it's time for Virginia Tech's offense to stand up and be counted. Their defense has played well. Let's not forget how explosive this Clemson offense nice was the last couple of weeks and here Bud Foster sits holding Clemson to 17 points near the end of the third quarter now it's time for the offense to show up a little bit line drive punt up at the 37 and out to the 45 it's Kyle Fuller a 31 yard punt and the Hokies will have pretty good starting field position here with 142 to go in the third quarter undefeateds in the ACC these two on the field here and uh, Georgia Tech with that wishbone huge win today against NC State and I think you look at that side of the conference Georgia Tech Virginia Tech UNC seem to kind of be the favorites of course Georgia Tech already has the win over North Carolina there's Wilson Wilson looking for a scene still on his feet but I'm not sure that's a good thing right now. Continuing to lose ground. And he's got a wave of blockers out there. Wilson out to the 35. What a run. Courtney Brown almost had him down. But he got out of his grasp. Frank Beamer can't get any more gray hair. He's all the way white, so I'm not sure. But let's give a little bit of credit to Darius Robinson, the cornerback, right here at the very end. Even though he gets cut down, does a great job keeping his balance. If he doesn't, that's a touchdown. 
And for a breather, they give it to Josh Oglesby, who comes into the ball game. And uh, told you earlier about how Wilson got into Frank Beamer's tower after Beamer came down to coach the special teams and uh, did his best Frank Beamer impersonation. With ones like that, you know, he can go up in the tower anytime he wants. And they talk about his energy, and right now, obviously, doesn't have much energy after running 272 yards for that game. <laughs> But the energy that he brings to that practice field, not just with the stunts and having fun and keeping it loose, but he practices hard every day. You were talking about Sammy Watkins the same way. He makes practice more fun for everybody. This is Gregory. And Gregory is brought down after a gain of about one on the play by Andre Branch. And it's going to be third and about ten to go here. They're on the fringes of field goal range. Do you take a shot? Do you play it conservatively as Wilson comes back? I think because you're on the fringe, I think you've got to be thinking about a first down here. I'm not quite sure. Now look, you pick up seven, eight yards, and then I think you may be thinking four down territory. And you're going to get time to think about yeah. it. So with David Wilson this tired, though, I'm not sure how much you want to use him on this play. Logan Thomas still looking to make the game's most important throw for him. 45 minutes in the bag. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this. Welcome back, everyone. College football primetime presented by Miller Lite. It's the ACC on ESPN and uh, part of the festivities here uh, on Sorority and Fraternity Row. A little step show happening last night. And uh, a little... Centipede. That's I haven't seen the centipede move in, move in a while. I haven't seen the reverse centipede ever. Yeah, you know, David Wilson, a pretty, pretty good mover and shaker too. He does backflips just for kicks. Looking at third and nine here, and Thomas never had a chance. Sacked back at the 43 by Andre Branch again. He's having a good night on that defensive front. And yeah, they made a switch at left tackle. They Lanier and Beckton switch in and out. This time it's Beckton. And watch, last time it was a speed rush off the edge that got it. This time it's the inside hand to the chest. A power move and throws him by. That is something that Clemson needed, of course, Daquan Bowers moving on to the NFL. Kind of nice to have a guy like Branch step up his game. A high spiral and uh going to be stopped dead at about the 13-yard line. Boy, the last four punts haven't been all that great. Uh, Demler. Now, you could have called that for illegal hands to the face, but it was pretty quick. And that's when you go to the combine as an offensive lineman, one of the things they do is measure your arm length. And the, the reason is, especially at left tackle, when you're playing against guys like Branch, 6'5", long arms, if they can get their hands to you before you can get them your hands on him you saw there he was able to knock Becton back and of course good strength good power is also good to go along with those long arms but if you're a short arm guy you can't play left tackle that's up to a bunch of sacks Ellington he stopped up right around the line of scrimmage by Antoine Hopkins Hopkins and his younger brother Derek playing up front number 56 and 98 respectively they say that Antoine uh, his motor doesn't rip quite as fast or as hard as his brother's. Not to, uh, to uh, criticize him or anything, but uh, Derek has a nice way of pushing him. Two big fellows in the trenches. Second and ten. And Boyd wisely throws it away. It'll be third and long coming up for the Tigers. James Gale with a little bit of pressure that time for Virginia Tech. If I were Tech, I'd be worried about some type of delay, like a draw, a wide receiver screen, something like that. I think that Clemson up 17-3, they're going to play it pretty conservatively. I wouldn't blame them, especially this far back in Tech territory. Boyd's going to try and take off, but not much room. And he's brought down at the 15-yard line. It'll be a gain of two, but fourth down coming up. For Clemson and men, you know, on a night, Ed, when we started off talking about Virginia Tech and Frank Beamer's team and Dabo Sweeney's team trying to find out exactly what they're dealing with after two big consecutive wins for Clemson and Virginia Tech's somewhat uh, questionable strength of schedule coming in, the one thing you have learned about Clemson so far is that in a lower scoring game, they can be on the upper hand. And to see their defense come out and play the way they have. 
And with this type of offense, you're going to be on the field a lot. And that's one thing that Clemson fans have to get used to. The defensive numbers are going to go up with this type of offense. Osley looking to make a play here. Great move, still on his feet, but there's a flag thrown. And Hosley's run out of bounds at the 30-yard line. And this is the opposite of Beamer Ball. Beamer Ball, everyone thought it was always about special teams, but it was about no penalties in critical times, no turnovers. It was that whole thing. And this tonight has been the absolute opposite of that. They've had an 11-yard punt, a 20. Number 34, a block in the back. It's a 10-yard penalty, first down. They've had a 28-yard punt. They've had turnovers. They've had penalties before the snap. That's a clean block there. Right there. Just it, unbelievable that you can see the players back. And, and Coach Beamer is, had, you know, he's screaming and yelling, but that's an illegal block. No two ways about it. What, what a huge blow, even though they're still on the plus side of the field. At the Clemson 48. Thomas giving plenty of time. Drills one complete to his leading receiver, Danny Cole, who picks up the first down. And a nice looking throw that time by Thomas to pick up 15. Well, ACC action, you know what? They've been 7 0 in conference opener since joining this league. That record in jeopardy right now. First and 10 from the 32. Clemson's already stopped one streak. That was Auburn 17 yeah. in a row, best in the nation. We're going to tackle 12 ACC wins in a row to try to stop that streak as well. Quick drop pass complete to DJ Cole. And he's still spinning all the way down to the 18-yard line for another first down for the Hokies. A 15-yard game. And now I think is where Virginia Tech needs to take a shot in the end zone. They've gotten to this place a couple of times, and they've frozen. So why not on first and 10 from about the 18, try something, maybe a post corner to Boykin something into the end zone I feel like they need to get one in here and let their defense that's playing well get back on the field and try to get him the ball back Cole 19 split to the bottom of your screen Boykin up top Wilson runs it and he's brought down at the 18 yard line a nice stop on the play by Anthony Anthony, on Anthony who's a special talent you know, we had the opportunity early in the year to do Texas that had, was playing a ton of true freshmen because they love that recruiting class. I'm not sure which school, Texas or Clemson, has the better true freshman class. When you start adding up this talent, including Anthony, who looks like he's going to be a long-time stuffer in the middle of that defense for Clemson. All freshmen have seen action already this season for the Tigers. Thomas completes it to Cole, and he's stopped immediately at the 15-yard line. It'll be about six yards to go for the first down. Robinson making the stop. And Logan Thomas came off of his read too soon. Watch the tight end come wide open, Drager. The, the blitz is picked up. They've got it. It's there. And he just came off of it too soon. He has a touchdown if he just holds that for a beat and knows it, it sees Drager coming over. Third and six. Boykin makes the catch. Makes a move, but didn't get enough for the first down. He's brought down at the 12 by Carlton Lewis. About three yards short of the first down. Do you even think about it? Are you heading for it here? Yeah, you have to, I think. I, I just don't think a field goal has any chance of helping you win this game. So this is the right call. You've got fourth and four. You have not been able to do much uh, running to the outside. I just think that's a bad play. I think, if anything, a, a delayed draw. I, I think if you can get Clemson up the field and, and hand it underneath to Wilson, you might have a shot here. Wilson beside Thomas to his left. Clemson bringing some heat. And it's incomplete at the eight-yard line. The Tigers defensively with another defining point in this ballgame. And Logan Thomas wants this ball back. You can see the smile on Frank Beamer's face. They had what they wanted, and that long face right there tells you the quarterback's not happy with the throw he just made. They had Danny Cole open. He was running an inside route. He was right at the sticks. He knew he had it, and he short-armed it a little bit and hopped it. 
Clemson defensively faced a lot of question marks about just how good they were coming into this game. When you look at some of their previous games, they gave up 19 against Troy, 27 against Wofford, who had them on the ropes, 24 against Auburn, and then 30 last week against a talented Florida State team. But they've answered a lot of questions about what they're working with here tonight against Virginia Tech. First and ten, Bellamy on the run, picks up about four. And second down and six. You know, Taj Boyd and Logan Thomas are actually really good friends. We talked about that a little earlier, and we asked Thomas about their relationship this week, and he said, yeah, we text all the time during the week, but this week we spoke on Sunday and nothing since. I hope he has a good season, he said, but not tonight. Both from the state of Virginia, became friends playing in an all-star game and kept in touch over the last few years. Pulls it out of the gut and hits his tight end, Allen. And Allen lethal in the open field, hurdling a bunch of would-be tacklers like Hosley and gets a first down. Let's go back to Wendy. Okay. All right, Wendy back here. It's Bellamy picking up about three yards. Pardon me, Ellington picking up about three. Gale making the tackle. Well, the deuce is usually on the loose, but not so much tonight. Just uh, 38 yards receiving, but a pretty balanced attack. Allen has been a little bit more of a factor tonight, right? Yes, absolutely. And I think that they've... Uh, I think what Taj Boyd is doing is doing a nice job of saying, look, they're, they're putting some focus on Watkins. Obviously, let me come down to some of these other guys. He's done a nice job of managing the game. Boyd slips and falls forward to the 42-yard line, picking up a couple of yards on the play. It'll be third down and about six to go. Saw that run by Dwayne Allen a few moments ago. We've raved about his talents. He has incredibly nimble feet for a guy 255 pounds. Well, he's big. He can run. He can catch. He can block. They use him in so many different positions now. He plays kind of an H-back, moves behind the line of scrimmage, lines up as a tight end. And uh, I'm not surprised he's winded. <laughs> Boyd keeps it himself into traffic and caught at the 45-yard line by Jerron Brown. This guy can really zip it. He, I love his throwing motion. It's so quick and so crisp. A lot of times you see quarterbacks have to wind up. Watch how quickly he zips that ball right off of his shoulder. He throws a heater in there amongst traffic. This, this guy... In this offense, as a sophomore, we're going to be talking about this young man for several years. Went to go watch the movie Moneyball last night, and he's been a money player for Clemson tonight. Keeps it himself on this one. And gets about another eight yards on the play. Giving them a second down and two. And uh, at what point does the clock really become Virginia Tech's enemy? Is, are we in that territory? We're in that territory. On this drive, if, if Virginia Tech, and give Virginia Tech defense credit. They battled hard in the second half. Just their offense really couldn't get anything going, couldn't get any points on the board. But I think these guys against this offense starting to wear down a little bit. But you cannot fault the effort so far from either side, quite frankly. Ellington, another first down. Down to the 31-yard line. Sunday NFL countdown returning this season. New start time. Three hours of the best in the business. Berman, Jackson, Johnson, Ditka, Carter. Insiders, Mortensen and Schefter. All providing the news and updates. Getting you ready for a busy Sunday in the NFL. Sunday NFL countdown presented by IBM on ESPN Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And Quint Kessenick just uh, setting a report up here that <laughs> Dabo Sweeney told Taj Boyd, slow down. We don't have to go fast now. We're up 14, plus side of the field. Clock is melting. That's good game management. And that clock run down to about seven and hands it off to a sprinting Bellamy. Bellamy so long, Hokies. That is a dagger touchdown right there. And I believe that's another true freshman. You were alluding to their talented freshman class. And the Tigers right now poised and ready to snap that five-game losing streak against Virginia Tech in a big way. Eight play and a little problem on the snap here. And they couldn't get it down. 
Zimmerman, the holder, couldn't get it down. And Sweeney will have a little fodder for that film session. But Bellamy with a great sprint, which sends people sprinting to the exits here in Blacksburg. Oh, ye of little faith. Maybe with good reason. Back under the lights at Lane Stadium here in Blacksburg, Virginia. Clemson on the brink of snapping a losing streak against the Hokies. And right now stands at five in a row. An impressive night so far by the guys in orange and white. Especially on the defensive side of the ball. There's Wilson at the seven. And David Wilson tackled. At the 24. David Wilson. 6.05 to go. Dabo Sweeney feeling pretty good about his team's chances right now. Back with more in a moment. Back in Blacksburg, I'm Mark Jones along with Ed Cunningham and Quint Kessinick down on the field. Virginia Tech had the game tied at 3-3 and now in a 20 to nothing run. 20 unanswered points. Wilson shaken up on that kickoff return a few moments ago on the sidelines. Backside heat and a fumble. Still loose. And a big hit by Andre Branch who seemingly is living in the backfield tonight. Well, you have to give the left tackle help when when a guy starts taking the game over as branch has you have to put it back to that side if you're going to do drop back passes and I learned this in the NFL I played against guys like Charles Haley Charles Mann guys Easy like guys that. to block yeah so you just get yeah, <laughs> when a guy starts dominating from this defensive end spot watch him just run by Beckton you have to either slide protect so he has inside help or you have to put it back over there at some point you can't just let a guy keep cutting your quarterback in half well, he moves pretty well for a guy's 260. Little screen pass. Coles. And DJ Coles brought down at the 23. Once again, the Clemson defense. We've learned a lot about them tonight and their abilities holding this Virginia Tech team to just three points at home. And I think for Virginia Tech, what they've learned is their defense is championship caliber, but their offense, and I'm not taking anything away from Clemson in defensively. I think they played great in branch. I mean, lights out, obviously. Uh, but I do think Virginia Tech, not quite sure who they are. They have David Wilson. I, I, I'm not sure what else they can rely on with this offense going forward in the season. Third and 15, and look who's there. Number 40, Branch. He should just lease that backfield for Virginia Tech because he's setting up shot. Yeah, at, so, at some point, you know, you talk about coaching adjustments. This is one of them. You, you just cannot leave these guys out on an island. And it's easy to beat those guys up, but I've been in that position. I was an offensive lineman where I felt like there was no way I could block a guy. And you just have to make a structural change and give help to wherever he's lined up. Because right now, Branch just, he took over the game. Just absolutely took it over. They've had Becton and Lanier out there at that left tackle spot, and uh, neither one has been able to keep close tabs on. And here's the other problem. I think their snap count was the same every time, and I think Branch picked up on it. Under four minutes to go. Hopkins. Well, this Clemson defense right now really branching out. If you don't believe me, check out these pictures. He's getting to know Logan Thomas very well tonight. They weren't friends before, but they are now. You talk about a coach that's very enthusiastic. This was Dabo Sweeney's first game as interim head coach three years ago, running down the hill, rubbing Howard's rock. <laughs> in Death Valley at home, and uh, he gets boy, a lead. He's going to win. Getaway speed. He's a good 40 yards ahead of his team. <laughs> and you know, it's funny. I think the country looks looks and sees when he's screaming after the big wins, and 
He's all excited, and that's all they see. But when you get a chance to talk with him and be around his program, there's a lot of depth to this guy. There's a lot of depth to what he does as a coach. And uh, his players have bought into that enthusiasm. And I think it's easy to kind of discount a guy who wears that much emotion on the sleeve. But you already mentioned gutsy hire bringing Chad Morris only his second year as a college coach, giving him full autonomy to run the offense, uh, keeping Kevin Steele, giving him full autonomy to run the defense. They go four and three after he takes over as interim coach. They take away the tag. I think this guy is building a championship program for the long haul. Yeah, getting some great, great recruits as well. You look at this team last year, they were six and seven, remember? And uh, boy, for the recruits like Sammy Watkins to keep the faith and keep their commitment to come to Clemson and help turn it around. It says a lot about the head coach as Bellamy runs it in between the tackles. Picks up a couple on the play. But defensively tonight, well, they have been uh, virtually unstoppable. Now having a little, uh, a little, <laughs> a little fun hot. on the sidelines. A little hot. We got to cool ourselves <laughs> down. Well, that defensive front, boy, you can make, you can make a lot of hay with those guys. And I think when people put in the tape, they're going to start saying, "Okay, where's number 40? You're going to have to start having a 40 plan. When a guy can get off the ball like that, that size, that speed." When teams look at uh, how to break down Clemson defensively, they're going to have to say, we're going to have to figure out where number 40 is and get somebody over there. And off, and a nice move in the hole by Bellamy again. It'll be third down and about fourth down coming up. Let's check in with Wendy in the studio. Win just a bit. All right, Wendy and uh, Swinney on the sidelines. I was pretty impressed when he told us that uh, his team has been able to refocus each week and you look at the stretch between the Auburn and the Florida State game and then the Florida State game in this game they haven't been raiding their own clippings because they've come out and performed here tonight once again we'll be back in a minute next week for the Tigers at home against Boston College then back on the road against Maryland you know there's always been a little bit of an undercurrent of uh, doomsday thinking at Clemson of late but those doubters have to be turned into believers after a game like this line drive punt and that one barely misses the coffin corner into the end zone it'll come out to the uh, 20 but what about the level of ex expectations now at Clemson well it's always been very high maybe a little higher than the championships they haven't won a national championship since 1981, but I think they're going to start getting into that conversation now. And you look at this schedule, Georgia Tech is looking very good. They whipped NC State today. They beat North Carolina. Tevin Washington, quarterback, looking very good. And that stretch, three of four on the road. NC State looking a little weak. But then, if you're sitting there at 11-0, and you've got to go to number 10, South Carolina, and then play an ACC championship game. So... Don't get too far ahead of yourself. I think this team is good enough to run that schedule if everything goes right and they stay healthy. But that's a, a tough road at the end. Thomas in trouble once again. A popular refrain. And brought down, but there's a flag down on the play as well. Courtney Brown with the pressure. With 1.20 to go. And, you know, at this point, this point in the game, I think, you know, they have a backup quarterback in Mark Leal that they like at Virginia Tech. This feels like the time mm -hmm. I would want to get that guy some game run. Going to be hold against Clemson. Hold it. Number 12 on the defense. 10 yards. First down. Well, with back-to-back -back wins to start the chase, points leader Tony Stewart goes for three in a row, while defending champ Jimmy Johnson will look to bounce back from a surprisingly shaky start. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continuing at Dover. Coverage beginning Sunday, 1 Eastern time on ESPN with NASCAR Countdown, presented by Napa. Well, in a non-NASCAR kind of game for Clemson, I think everybody got so used to Sammy Watkins running by people in a game where he was held in check. Tigers proving we can slug it out, grind it a little bit if we have to. Game about uh, three on the play by Wilson. Uh, Hey, one thing we haven't touched on tonight, two new members in this conference that Swinney's going to see, Pittsburgh and Syracuse. Your thoughts on them coming into the conference? When they first uh, announced it, I thought, wow, that's underwhelming. You know, they're not big football programs, and a lot of this expansion is about money, and it is about football and TV contracts football. But in talking to some folks from the conference, it was about stability. 
two good academic institutions. Let this play one out. These guys are celebrating with the uh, play going on the field. Yeah. A third and seven. But you know when you when you really break it down, you have two good academic institutions in Syracuse and Pittsburgh, two schools that take football very seriously and seem to be on the rise. Todd Graham was a wonderful hire at Pittsburgh. Doug Marone doing a nice job at Syracuse. And what they did geographically was bridge the gap between the lower uh, southern schools and Boston College. Mm. So now they have a bigger footprint along the Atlantic coast. So in hindsight, I didn't like it at first, but for stability, a good academic move for these institutions, it makes sense. The ever-changing landscape of college athletics. Boykin close to the first down. How much do these guys dig their coach and feel their coach this much? Not just once with the Gatorade shower, but uh, Fourth down a yard from the 39 yard then they get him again. <laughs> <laughs> and he was feeling them, too. Swinney and the Tigers going to come out of here with a 23 to 3 victory. This one cooked, glazed, and sliced in orange and white. And I'm a buyer. First time in school history, first time in ACC history that anyone has beaten three top 20 teams in a row. I'm a buyer. Right now down in Clemson, South Carolina, they're thinking about Homer Jordan and Perry Tuttle and days of past in the glory days of the national championship. Can they get there? This was certainly an impressive three-game stretch. As impressive as we've seen in a long time for the Clemson Tigers. This in the wake of a 6-7 and seven season last year. As we go downstairs to Quinn with the winning head coach. Coach, coach they, they, they got you again. You talked this week about coming into this hostile environment and managing the external factors. How'd you guys manage? Well, first of all, you know, God is great. It's great. And this team has got a ton of love. And that's really what you're seeing with these guys. They love each other. They love Clemson. And tonight, you know, this is a tough, tough, I mean, listen, Virginia Tech has won 12 straight conference games, 15 straight regular season games. It's freezing cold out here. I think they did a great job of handling the external factors. And, uh, you know, we're 5-0 football team, still got a long way to go, but we've played a champion every single week for five straight weeks. You know, maybe there's some people out there that might start believing in this team a little bit because I know this. I got 115 guys and a whole staff that believes in this football team. You look up at the scoreboard, three points for Virginia Tech. How do you best describe your defense? Relentless. I mean, our deep, we had just enough offense and a whole lot of defense. And that was the story of this night. Uh, we hit a couple plays on them, but our defense was awesome all night in the red zone. It didn't matter. Uh, we had, you know, we were plus in the turnover margin. So our special teams were awesome. How about that pump protection? Dawson Zimmerman came back, hurt last week, did a great job. You know, I just can't say enough for those guys. Awful proud to be a Clemson Tiger. It's 40 degrees out. You get the Gatorade sour again. Is there any doubt in your mind how much this team loves you? Well, I love them. And, uh, you know, we we got a great staff here. We've got great chemistry. And, you know, my coach, Coach Stallings, I'm sure he's at home watching this right now. And, you know, he taught me that the fun's into winning. And this is a lot of fun. And we're going to get over here and we're going to celebrate with our fans that drove a long way. And I want to tell all the Clemson Nation, they better be in Clemson when we show up. I don't know what time it's going to be there, but they better be there waiting on us because it's time to have some fun in Clemson, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Congratulations, Coach. Big road win. Uh, you know, for a guy on the hot seat, he's a little cold right now, but that hot is. seat <laughs> is now cold, too. One thing about Sweeney, he is authentic, organic, and keeping it real. Our final score once again. It was Clemson 23, Virginia Tech 3. Coming up next on ESPN 2, College Football Scoreboard, Brett Cunningham and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Mark Jones saying good night from Blacksburg. Yeah, they feel their coach in a big way. This has been a presentation of ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. And right now, all wet, we're dry. We're going to send it back to the studio.